So now we're going to add our second node. So we're going to add our UR node into our link list now. So what we're going to have now will be our ADC node. When we finish doing our ADC transfer, we will then start our UR transfer and then that one will link back to the start, which will then do the ADC transfer again and so on. So first thing is quick question, where this ADC takes data from? You're taking the chat from channels um, one, two, three, four. That's what we set as those four single ended channels. Right, but but the analog data. Yes, yeah, it's just receiving with, analog data from where? Um, whatever those pins are currently floating at. OK, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, the, the data that we're receiving isn't important. It's just showing you that data is coming in. You had zeros in your register. You're seeing different values now. Yeah, I, I thought the data comes from some measuring something on the board or something. But, but no, no, no. It's just taking whatever those pins are currently floating at at the time. OK, I don't believe they're connected to anything else on the um, nucleo board. I haven't had a proper look at the schematics. Uh, I believe it's just floating pins because they are moving up and down. Uh, when you look at the data. Yeah, yeah. So what what we're reading is not relevant. It's the process that you're um, looking at here. But in principle, if you connect those to to some source, then you'll read. Yes. Them. Yeah. 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 If you put if you wired in um, different voltage sources, you should have nice stable values um, sat on each of those pins um, from whatever you're reading from. Yeah. Okay. But if you're reading, say, temperature sensors on each one, then you'd have a fairly slow moving uh, source, whereas ours, I think, are fluctuating quite a lot because it's just floating with whatever noise is on the board. Right, so what we are going to do now is our first node loads in our parameters into our DMA channel, which is going to be our ADC read. That will then go through and count down from its number of um, transactions it's got to do so it'll load channel one in channel two so on so on so on until it fills the uh, all 64 uh, elements of our data array as soon as we've completed that our linked list will then switch over to node two all the parameters of node two will get loaded into the dma channel and the process starts again this time the ur will be sending the data from the memory out over your uh, UART channel. And again, it will go through each element at a time until it reaches the end, and then it will jump back to configuring the ADC into the DMA channel, and it will start the process over again. So let's now do this in the UART, which is why I said you could start from your homework, because this is exactly what you did in your homework. So if you've started from your homework then you've got a fairly easy uh, time now uh, because everything here is already done for you so if you go back to your cube mx uh, we're now going to enable usart number one so on the connectivity you're looking for usart number one and we want to be asynchronous and that should enable pins nine and 10 on our pinout diagram. We don't need to change any configurations. We can leave the board rate as its default value there, which is fine. So that's all we need for the peripheral side. Now we go back to our linked list in utilities. We need to highlight our queue name at the top. And we need to add a new list. Oh, sorry, add a new node, sorry, not a list. We need to add a node to our existing list. So we need to give our node a new name. So I'm going to call it node two to make life easy for my screen captures. So it's your node name two. 
no space, just put your node name two. And the configuration that this one is going to be linked to is our USART number one. So in request configuration, it's going to pull in USART number one TX. So we're transmitting data. So it's the TX version of USART number one. And in the channel configuration, we need to change the direction because we are going from memory to peripheral. Our source data is the memory array, so that's going to increment. So we need to enable uh, source address increment. And our runtime configuration is going to be our, oops, is it our parameters from our data array? So where's my copy screens? There we go. So our source address is data, because that's our data buffer. Our destination address is going to be our data register, our transmit data register for our UART number one. And our data size is going to be the same as we had for our ADC, which is 64 times two. And that's it. We don't have to change anything on data width because it's only we're only sending out by 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 over the UART. Therefore, nothing has to change in our destination data settings either. So once you've configured all that, make sure your name is node name two, your node name two, and then you can generate your code again. terminate my debug session because I left my debug session running. I want to open my project. There we go. So now hopefully, once you terminate your debug session, your code should have updated. And in main.c, you'll know if it's updated because you'll see you've now got some UART configuration in here. Therefore, you'll know your cube IDE has updated. And we now need to enable the DMA for the One use. Quick question. Do we still yes. have the old code or, or we have to write it again? No, no. All your old code should have been placed between a user code begin and a user code end. So it should all be maintained. OK. So there's two of the lines that we pasted in earlier there in mine. In the program private variables. So everything you should have pasted as long as you pasted in the correct locations. Between, between a user code begin and a user code end your code is maintained. So the first item we need to do is link the DMA to USART number one. So this we can do with one line of code. Uh, and that can go inside our user code begin two. So it sits between the linked list and the ADC starts. Goes in. There. That's line 114 for me. Next item we need to do is enable the UART itself. So we've linked the UART to the DMA. 
now we need to enable the UART. So that goes after we've linked it in your code. Make sure it goes after we've done the link. So that goes at line 115 for me. And now, sadly, in this current version, there is a bug inside our CubeMX generation. So we have to go into our linklist.c file and change our labels. Now we have to be very careful of where which ones we're changing. So if you go into your linklist.c, if you scroll down at line 52, you will see your queue name configuration. Then you'll see all the configuration for the ADC. And if you remember correctly, your ADC is your node name, not your node name number two. So at line 83 on my screen, this should be your node name. You need to delete the twos between line 83 and 87. Then if you scroll a bit further down your link list, you'll see your USART configuration, which is correct. That is your node name number two. So it's between lines 83 and 87, just after all your configuration for your ADC. That is your node name, not your node name number two. So once you've done that, you should be able to highlight the project and build it. Again, you'll see the warnings about the casting. Um, incorrect there. And now if you run your code. And then launch a terminal program. So you can have a launch the inbuilt one that you've done in your homework. Or you can do an external one like I'm doing here. If I change my setup to be 115200. You can see there I've got data streaming out at one hell of a speed. Oh, and my PC keeps flinging at me because I'm exceeding the TerraTurn buffer because data is streaming so fast me at the moment so I'll close that because I keep getting annoying pings in my ears. So now you can see that data is now being streamed out of your machine at I think we've set the clocks at set four megahertz. So uh, however fast the um, the peripheral clock is for the USART number one there. So one one five two hundred board which was the maximum we set there. So you can see now that your data is reading the ADC into the RAM buffer, then switching over and instantly sending that data straight back out and backwards and forwards. So can everybody see data streaming out in a terminal window? How am I doing for time? Half 11, I was trying to stop at half 11. Right, I'll try and do the trigger one just to preview that we can slow down before we go for lunch. Is everybody OK? Not really. My streaming doesn't have work. Your streaming is not working. Oh, yeah, it uh, prints the first you are prints. I left the homework printing, so the homework printing ends in the third character and then uh, nothing happens. So. Oh. Right. So it uh, maybe it works and just kills the. <laughs> um, you are, it, it might be a, actually 
it depends. I, I forget because I I am um, when I did this for this particular one. I think I ended up disabling the 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 Hello World you art uh, line. I yeah, there should exactly be a line. You should is. have a line in user code two. User code begin two. There should be something for your that's displaying your Hello World buffer. Yeah, probably, and I, I think I commented it out, out in the end. Yeah, probably comment that line out. Just because it conflicts with the, the settings that we're trying to uh, basically do in, in DMA, and we, we end up getting a conflict. Okay, well that that explains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because at the moment you've set your Hello World to use non-DMA, and we're trying to set it here to use the DMA. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so you might have a conflict there on that one. Yeah, sorry, I should have said comment that line out when I was going through the code. If you'd done it that way, yeah, my apologies. Yes, it's it's sensible. I just wasn't thinking. Yeah. Just following dummily. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> you, yeah, you're I okay think... until this set section actually, because uh, in the previous section it doesn't matter. But now when we add the UART configuration, obviously it then does conflict. So yeah, yeah, I should have I should have mentioned that one. Yes. It's because I'm starting from a blank project because obviously I didn't have the homework one open. Yeah, I, left, I left me I left my homework one closed there at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So you'll need to comment that one line out. Right. So I'll try and quickly. We've hit what I should have stopped at lunchtime. I'll try and quickly go through triggers with you before we actually do stop for lunch because I think this one's quite um, good for you because it's going to slow down what you're streaming out of your UART. This will. Um, so what we're now going to do is we're going to link uh, a timer as a trigger source um, for our DMA ADC command. So it'll only do the process. It'll only start the process once the timer event uh, has expired or updated. So. Everything stays as before. Your link list will load your channel with your DMA config. Nothing will happen at that point until your timer generates its um, update event. Then it'll trigger our DMA, where it'll do the same process, load all the registers, all 64 cycles. Then it'll instantly go and change the settings to the USART and transmit everything else. Then it will reload our ADC again and then sit there and wait till the next trigger event. So rather than continuous data, we're now going to send it out um, at whatever frequency we set for our timer update event. So if we go back to our um, Cubamex, And we go into our um, linked list, which is where I currently am. We need to make sure we're editing now node name. So the, the configuration for the ADC one, which is node name, not node name two. So make sure you highlight the correct one. And we're now going to look at the trigger section. So if I reduce all these boxes that I've opened. If I now expand the trigger section inside your node name. I want to set my trigger configuration. To be DMA request on rising edge. And my trigger selection is going to be timer number 15. So timer 15 trigger output. So that's setting my trigger event in my link list. Now I've got to go and enable my timer 15. So I'll expand timers on the left hand side. Timer 15. 
we need to check the box to say that we're using the internal clock. And in our timer parameters, we want to set our prescaler to 49,999. And as long as we're running at 4 megahertz, yes, we're at 4 megahertz. I want to set my counter period to be 79. And my trigger output parameters need to be event selection to be update event. So that's a prescaler of 49,999, account period of 79, and trigger event selection to be update event. So this is going to now, hopefully, when you look in your terminal window in a minute, you should only see a burst of data every second. So it will read all the ADCs, send everything out over the UART, and then wait one second before it does it again. So it's your way of controlling how frequently your DMAs are doing its read cycles or transmit cycles. And as I say, all this is completely independent of the CPU core. Once the CPU cores set everything up, it goes to sleep, and then this will carry on actioning in the background. So once you've set your timer, we can generate code again. Project. Yep. Right. So we know that my code's updated now because I've got timer 15 code here included in my software. Now, if I go into here, so we now need to start the timer. So that goes right at the end after we've started the ADC. Go. And again, because we've now regenerated our code, um, we need to update our linked list because we've regenerated, therefore the bug has reappeared again that we corrected because that's not between a user code begin and a user code end. So again, at line 85 to 89 now on my screen, I need to change my your name to, to your name. Make sure you only do it on the section that follows the ADC configuration. Down here is correct. 102 to 106 is correct. And now we can rebuild and rerun our project. To debug. A terra term again. Board rate to be correct. I'm a bit bigger for you so you can see. So now when I hit run, you now only see burst of traffic coming through. Once a second, you will see a burst of data coming through now. And remember the data that we're reading from the ADCs, it's not being formatted anyway, which is why it's not appearing as anything sensible on the screen. So there's no data formatting of any sort, and we're just sending whatever that 
14 bit reading gears and I've no idea what that converts on the ASCII table to a character. So, so you're not expecting to see anything sensible in data. It's the fact that you're just seeing bursts of data now coming through once a second, which is our timer update event. So hopefully you're all seeing that now. So now we load our ADC parameters into our channel. It sits there and waits until the timer triggers. Once the timer triggers, reads all the ADC, loads in the UART parameters, writes out all the UART parameters. The linked list will then jump you back to the first node, which then loads in all the ADC parameters again, and then it sits and waits again. So you've now hopefully seen the ADC managing by the timer to give you one second burst of data now, rather than that mass streaming of data that kept overflowing the uh, TerraTerm buffer. <laughs> 